What's up, Buffalo Bill fans? This will be my last video before this draft. I've talked about this draft at nausea, other Bills fans, myself, <laughs> people in general, and it's just one of the most frustrating drafts I think I've ever watched in all my years of watching draft, and I've watched quite a few. This has been the most frustrating. Not so much confusion about where they should pick, and who they should pick, just other Bills fans who just want to, you know, oh, we'll wait on the quarterback. Well, he's, you know, there's no quarterback worth taking because they're just so, again, eagerly to accept anything that the mainstream sports media is, is throwing at you. And I don't buy that at all. I'm here to talk about that a little bit. And we hear these things, these terms bantied about so much like arm strength. And I've got to tell you, that is the most overused cliche to compartmentalize a quarterback that I've ever heard in my life. It's it's so overused and overhyped. It, it's who knows who has a strong arm and who doesn't. I mean, Matt Barkley again was the he because he's the guy that people consistently say doesn't have a strong arm was the consensus number one pick before they played a college football game last year. And all of a sudden, in this time, his arm is not NFL worthy. I don't understand. Um, the football establishment has made, or conditioned, should I say, football fans to believe that if a guy isn't 6'4", 230-some pounds, and throws with this type of motion and, and, and runs this fast and, and and his cadence sounds this way and his arm angles like this and, and all this other repetitive regurgitating cliche crap he's not a quarterback and cannot succeed as an NFL quarterback everything the football establishment has said about Russell Wilson, Doug Flutie, Drew Brees, even Aaron Rodgers to some extent, those guys could not succeed because they didn't have enough arm, they weren't prototypical in size, so on and so forth. And they have proven that that is total BS. And it's been done many, many times before. And there's been many prototypical 6'4", 6'5", strong arm through pretty beautiful tight spiral quarterbacks who have bombed. So let's stop overanalyzing and over paralysis by analysis with that because that is just, it's dry, it's done, it's meaningless. Now, on to the pre-draft luncheon. Uh, all Bills fans, sports media wanted to try to ascertain, try to decode or dissect what was said or what wasn't said and some of the stuff I found rather interesting some of the things I thought were just kind of eh, you know like them talking up Tavon Austin I, I didn't really buy much into that but the quarterbacks it was interesting to me and I'm of the opinion sometimes the best time to hide something is in plain sight the fact that I don't think anybody in the football community is of the opinion that the Bills aren't going to take a quarterback because I believe they know they are and I the Bills are without question it's just a question of who and I believe it's down to three people Geno Smith who I predicted the Bills would pick Ryan Nassib and Matt Barkley they didn't really give much lip service to Geno at all just asked one question and that was it I assume either to deflect as much attention as possible or they just believe he's not going to be there, which is also possible. Now, down to Nassib and Barkley. When asked the question, Nick's passed the, the, um, the question off to an area scout, Doug Majeski said that's his guy. Meaning, I guess he's the guy in the room that's big on him. Because when you refer to somebody as his guy, that's kind of what you mean. The guy kind of laughed, Majeski, and, you know, he gave his, you know, pretty much redundant analysis, which is, you know, the, the same things all scouts say about these young quarterbacks. So they have a good arm, they pick up the the system, they're very coachable, they're, they're sharp, 
etc., etc. Then asked a question about Barclay. You know, all the different, you know, questions that one would ask. But Joe Biscaglia asked the question about Barclay. Pretty, pretty straightforward. And here's what was said. He's a brilliant guy, very smart, picks it up in a hurry. I mean, he's played in a good league. And uh, Doug, won't you go with him? And to add to the fact that um, he's, he's been on a big stage for a while. He's produced. And I think the best thing about him is he knows how to get the ball to his playmakers. And that's, I think, one of the best qualities he has and a good trait to have in a quarterback. Um, with, with him, I know a lot of people will say that he doesn't have the required arm strength, um, it, per se. Uh, does he have the arm to whip it through a Buffalo win? I think everyone wants to know. I, in our opinion, uh, a guy that doesn't have an outright cannon can still get away with it with uh, having timing and being able to anticipate throws and being able to have knowledge of defenses and when to throw to a spot and when to adjust his throwing motion to get the most out of what he has. Uh, perfect example of that is Joe Montana. Joe Montana didn't have the strongest of arms, but he's still arguably one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL history. You're saying that has all that? We believe that he has a chance to, to be successful with his school, with his skill set. You know, Joe, when you say a lot of people say that, I, I, I don't know who that is, but you know, uh, they, a lot of it, uh, that old boy a year ago was the number one guy, and then he got hurt. And I don't know how much that affected him, and neither does that a lot of people. They probably don't either. Okay. So, there's been several things said, and Nick's is been known to slip up before. He slipped up in this in this um, very press conference, as a matter of fact, when he revealed that Aaron Williams had switched to safety. He wasn't asked that question at all. He just simply said that Aaron could move inside or move outside and play the slot. And they were like, well, he's not a cornerback anymore. And he's like, no, he's, he's been moved to safety. I'm not saying that. They're saying that. <laughs> and he kind of had to clear it. And it was like, okay, he kind of slipped. And Nix has been candid, I feel like, in the past with, with a lot of things. I don't think that he's ever been, you know, fooling anybody with, with, with I mean, even Cordy Glenn last year. It was, it was, everybody knew the Bills loved Cordy Glenn. It was just a question of whether he was a guard or a tackle. They were very adamant that he was a tackle. But anyway, things that have been said by Nix in the last week. He said this several times. Twice, definitely. John Murphy show here in this press conference believes there is two to three franchise quarterbacks in this draft. Two to three. He's alluded to the fact that Barkley was the number one guy several times before he got hurt. And he just did it again for you to listen to. We might have had to lose 12 or 13 games to get Barkley, but it doesn't look that way. Hmm. Uh, um, honestly, I, I, I would definitely, I, I feel that holds water to them. I think that that holds weight. I think that they feel very strongly about that. I don't think that they're hiding that in the least. And the fact that... Nix took the question, passed it off to the future GM of the team, then added to it at the end. I think that that means something. And I think they're very content at staying there at eight. And I think they're going to take Matt Barkley at eight. That's pretty much what I'm saying. I think that it, it, it's saying it's obvious, but that's, that's, the, that's the general sense that I'm getting that they like they like Barkley, they like the fact he was the number one guy, they like the fact that he's has has this much experience, that he's played on the big stage, that he that he has the the experience, the the, the pedigree, if you will, you know, having started from his freshman year in high school all the way through from a freshman at, at USC. He's played, you know, like you said, he's played in a big league, he's played in you know, against good competition. Um, the fact that he's beaten Marone twice in college. Again, I really think that that holds something to them. It, it may not to other people, but for them, I think it does. Um, and you can look at it the reverse. Like, 
Roan has, has handled Geno Smith pretty well. His Syracuse teams has handled Geno and made him not look so good. I'm not saying that's the end-all, be-all, but I think it does play a factor. You know, it, it just... Marone's last game in college was against him. You know, looking at it at first doesn't mean as much, but I think that if you go over it again and again and again, yeah, I think it does. And I think if you had a guy light you up to the tune of 11 touchdowns and only one interception in two games, that might mean something also. I just think the arrow is pointing to Barkley. Um, it's just a gut feeling I have. I've shared it with some other people. I want to hear your thoughts, your opinions, but that's that's the way I feel like it's going. Um, again, the offense, they're going to kind of run, like like they've said, West Coast mixed in with K-Gun principles, the up-tempo, the fast pace. Um, I haven't heard or, or read anywhere. Everybody's just kind of the assumption that there's going to be this pistol slash read option in there, and I just... I don't think that's a long-term offense in the NFL, and it's not a long-term offense for an NFL quarterback. You're not going to see Colin Kaepernick running that when he's, you know, in his 30s or when he's in his early 30s. It's just not sustainable. You get a guy hurt doing that. I mean, look at Ben. Ben's not a running quarterback, but he's a guy who's taken us a lot of hits. He makes a lot of plays with his legs, and he's big. And you've seen over the last few years, he's started to break down and miss multiple games because of it. You know, that, you know, the best way to keep your quarterback on the field is to keep him clean, keep him in the pocket, and get the ball out of his hands quick. And that's what you see. The, the quarterbacks like the Eli Mannings, the Peyton Mannings, the Tom Brady's, the, the Drew Brees even, that's what they do. And I just feel like uh, that's that's where they're headed. Uh, not to overanalyze it, not to you know change my pick at the last minute, uh, but it's just it's just kind of the, the general sense I'm getting before this draft uh, comes around that the pick is going to be Matt Barkley at 8. All right, Bills fans, let me hear your thoughts, your opinions, your feedback, and, and let me know what you think.